Ross, where are you? We have a little... <laughs> we just have a little presentation to make for you, Gurudev. Uh, Prem Velas, I really would like you to present Sri Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu Bindu. And so many more nectar sarkans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, especially those who are in publication. He, Lavanga Lapadidi, Krishna Prampuru, who's designed to give him the book a beautiful new design. Uh, Aranya Maharaj, too, Madhu Maharaj, all, all are engaged. I want that very soon. Oh, so many nectar should come. Ujjwal in Mani. Bhakti Samish Sindhu, Gita Govinda, Gita Govinda, Vrithi Vrithi, Samad Bhagavatam, Tent Kendo Ayvan. Especially Rast Panchatthai, Bhramar Ghi, Gopi Ghi, Venu Ghi. So you should all sing some mercy to me. <laughs> we also have another little presentation for you, Shri Gurudev. Thank you. My Shiksha Guru and Priya Bandhu, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Their lasting relation. Uh, uh, the relation between Srila Prabhupada and Krishna and Shri Prabhupada. Our gurus, one Siddhanta, one at heart. Yeah. And Guru Deva Tatma. Yeah. And I would like to especially thank those devotees who worked on it, especially Shamarani DD and yeah. her crew, Anita, Vasanti, Shakti yeah. for appropriating, yeah. and Kul cool Krishna for getting it all together. Yeah. And again, a total Krishna and Susie for driving three hours non-stop to bring it here in time. Yay! And of course, Srila Gurudev for really doing all the work. Request them all to collect all new books. And oh. Of course. <laughs> we have presented the first set of books to Srila Gurudev. At the book table, <laughs> Nanda Gopal will be busy selling all the new titles that have arrived. And if you may request it, more and more are on the way. Pancha Gavatru is Chapi Pasindu, Vivacha, Patitara, Ravi, 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 the heart of everyone here. One of the fundamental activities of our Sampradaya is book writing, book publishing, and book distribution. Shruti Smriti Puranadi Pancharatra Vidambina Aikanti Ki Harer Bhaktir Utpatai Aivakalpate. This means that of our devotional service, which is devoid of reference for the Shruti, Shmritis, the Vedic literatures, Purans, Narada Pancharatra, then that devotional service, even though it is maybe Aikantika Bhakti, one pointed devotion, it is simply a disturbance. 
all of the beliefs that we have, the, the nine prameyas that are listed in Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur's Jaiva Dharma, that are the beliefs, the foundation of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, are based on the evidence, the praman, which is coming through Amnaya. Amnaya means Vedic knowledge which is received through our Guru Parampara. In Kali Yuga, especially now, in previous times, this was passed down through oral tradition. Now, in this age, it has to be written in order for, for all of us to read again and again and remember. So the combination of hearing the Vedic literatures from the lips of pure devotees and also reading these books and studying these books will create a very solid foundation for our knowledge in Krishna consciousness. And with the modern day technology of printing, the internet, and so forth, now this knowledge can be spread all over the world very, very quickly. And this movement can increase leaps and bounds tremendously. Srila Goswami knew the Manobhishtam of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and Mahaprabhu had asked him to do two primary things. One, to go to Vrindavan and reestablish the lost places of Krishna's pastimes, establish the temple there, Govindaji Temple, and other places. And he also requested that he write transcendental literatures. Srila Goswami Pad has written so many as well as all the six Goswamis, Sanatan, Shijiva Goswami, Gopal Bhatta Goswami, Raghunath Das Goswami, and Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Saptam Goswami, the seventh Goswami. So this is a heritage which is followed by all of our Rupa Nuga Guru Acharyas, that they write, translate, publish, and distribute transcendental literatures. Srila Bhakti Siddhartha Saraswati Thakur. Ah, one thing. Jiva Goswami also wrote on palm leaves some of the first writings of Srila Goswami. So he was the first book publisher and first book distributor. Srinivas Acharya, Narottam, and Shamananda Prabhu, they also distributed books all throughout India. Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur wrote many, many, many books. Srila Bhakti Sanatha Saraswati Thakur states in his Upadesh Avali, in the back of the song book, The Sixth Point, that if one establishes a printing press for devotional books and does uh, <coughs> preaching through Nam Hatta, this is real service to Sri Mayapur Dham. He made a statement that if it's needed, you can even sell the marble off the altar to print and distribute books. Srila Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada, he personally distributed books, wrote books, published books, and encouraged all of us for many, many years about the transcendental importance of book distribution. So we have all of these examples. Now, our Srila Gurudev, Om Vishnu Pada Sri Srimad Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, he is also every day writing, translating, writing commentaries, painstakingly uh, engaging in this service and engaging so many devotees in this service in Vrindavan and here. And he desires that these books are not just written and published, but that they're distributed all over the world. So I'd like to read one quote from the new book that was just coming out. Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu Bhuru by Srila Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur. The 54th Anga of Bhakti is called Vaishnav Shastra Seva, to serve Vaishnav scriptures. What scriptures? Scriptures that cause Bhagavad Bhakti. These are Vaishnav scriptures. One should faithfully and regularly study such scriptures. Hear them from the mouths of pure devotees. Read and recite them with a worshipful attitude. And one should know the object to be obtained from such scriptures. That is Bhagavad Bhakti. And having full faith in that, one should mold one's life in accordance with its principles. So there's two things here. 
to read, to hear, to publish, to distribute, to care for, but in full knowledge, and with full faith, and with devotion. The restoration of, the careful keeping of, the publishing, and the propagation of Vaishnava Shastra are all included within Shastra Seva. The Skanda Purana and the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu quoted here, the Vaishnava Shastras like Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, and so on propound Ananya Bhakti or exclusive devotion to Sri Krishna. Those who keep such scriptures in their home and worship them with great respect are freed from all sins. Even the devatas offer prayers to such persons. Those who hear the Vaishnava Shastras from the mouth of pure devotees and who regularly study them on their own are truly blessed in this world. Sri Krishna becomes pleased with them. Therefore, it is imperative for the sadaka to serve the Vaishnava Shastras. Thank you. So we should not confuse, as Jude said, Arup Siddha Bhakti with Swarup Siddha Bhakti. If book distribution is done in full knowledge, then Gurudev said that is pure bhakti, complete bhakti, not lacking anything, or Swarup Siddha Bhakti. We should not confuse the rope with the snake. No. What is pure bhakti and what is a rope Siddha Bhakti? Thank you very much. Quickly, quickly, we have so much to think. Then the back, pronounce. Very strong, very strong, quickly. The archives have produced uh, videos of the other classes of Srila Gurudev, and we're collecting over 60 classes, we'll have 100 soon. We've had a nice donation, so anybody who would like to buy classes of all the lectures here, it's been sponsored half, you only have to pay half. And I'd like to read one thing. Um, this was published by Srila Prabhupada in 1968, Teachings of Lord Chaitanya, and so to clear up any confusion why we're here tonight. Ramananda Roy then began to relate the confidential and transcendental activities of Radha and Krishna. These activities cannot be understood in the emotional relationship with the Supreme Lord as master and servant, friend and friend, or parent and son. This confidential subject matter can be understood only in the association of the damsels of Raj, where the confidential activities have arisen from the feelings and emotions of those damsels. Without the association association of the damsels of Raj, one cannot nourish or cherish the transcendental understanding. In other words, these confidential pastimes of Radha and Krishna have expanded through the mercy of the damsels. Without their mercy, they cannot be understood. One has to follow in the footsteps of the damsels of Raj to understand. So we know why you're here tonight, because Srila Prabhupada instructed us to be here. Now, you should come with me in Vrindavan in the council of Rupa Goswami. And he is speaking, not myself. No? So, what we explained Uttama Bhakti, now oh, be ready. Brahma, at once be ready. Quickly. So, this Uttama Bhakti that we, for four, five days we are, explaining. <coughs> he is telling that this Uttama Bhakti is divided into three parts, three sections. Hmm? Sadhan Bhakti, Bhav Bhakti, and then Prem Bhakti. Three. Up to Bhav Bhakti, there is some Sadhan. But in Prem Bhakti, this is with the no sadhan. Only to serve Krishna and Radhika and to develop their oh my nesh. There is in Vaikuntha or in Dwarka, Golok, Vaikuntha, Vrindavan, no sadhan. This is Siddha Bhumi. By serving Radha and Krishna gradually in the guidance of Nitya Siddha, 
when they will be Siddha, oh, they will have to suffer Radha and Krishna. So, what is Sadhana Bhakti? First, you should know what we are doing. All are not Sadhana Bhakti. Hmm? <coughs> if you have some what, goal of your sadhan, object, and that object only bhav. How to achieve bhav? With this mood, we, if you will practice in the guidance of Shuddha, Rupanuga, Araganuga, Vaishnava, then it will be sadhan. Our sadhan is endless. <coughs> For this sadhak, Srila Rupa Goswami has told, Billu Mangal was like sadhak. Like in this world, Raghunath Das Goswami, what he showed? Oh, really? It is also ideal for sadhan bhakti. And also he is ideal for bhav bhakti and prem bhakti too. Three things are in him. So, what is, what is sadhan? I told kati sadhya bhavet sadhya bhava so sadhana vidha nitya siddhasya bhavam prakatyam vidhisya. Only to, uh, only to clear the covering which is covering Bhakti Devi, Shuddha Bhakti, Uttama Bhakti. We'll have to cover, um, to remove the cover, not to make anything. Already it is there. Sarv Shiddha Bhakti. In the heart of, as he explained, in the heart of Radhika. How Radhika serves in what? Rur, Pati Rur, Mahabhav more than that. So this is bhakti. So, first sadhan bhakti, in the guidance of oh, high class of Vaishnava, in guidance. <coughs> and being in Vrindavan actually, but if you cannot to be in Vrindavan, then by mind also, you can do And, you should practice bhakti. This bhakti is also all sadhan bhakti, bhav bhakti and prem bhakti. They are divided also into vaidhi bhakti and ragan bhakti. Where shastra shasan, huh? we are following what in shastra has been written. And, and? Yes. Then we are engaged in bhakti, then it is vaidhi. It is essential to follow this vaidhi bhakti. But what Rupa Goswami has told and what is in Chaitanya Charitamrita. I think that if anyone will follow these instructions of Rupa Goswami Bhu, Vacho Vegam, Manasaha Krodha Vegam, Atyahar Prayasascha, and Atkutsaha Nishya, and then, and after that, Manasaha Griya. Oh, this is more important. And then, oh, last one. Pannam Rupa Charitadi Sukritananu Kramini Manasa Rasananyo Jatishan Prajet Tadanuragi Jananugami Kalam Nayet. Oh, this is So you must know all these things. So, then what is Raganuga? You should know. Oh, the service of Ragatmik Jan in Golok Vrindavan. If anyone in this world wants to gain and he is following their footprints and serving 
as they are doing by manasi seva and apar seva sadhaka siddha rupena then like rup goswami sanatan goswami they practice bhakti yog by oh what they have uh, form in the associates of chaitanya mahaprabhu and also what in krishna in past times rup manjari rat manjari so we will have to follow all these things then raganuga bhakti chaitanya mahaprabhu only came for this ragan bhakti preaching and you should know that swami bhakti vedan swami maharaj और गुरुदेव और गुरु परंपरा हैज ओनली कम इन द लाइन ऑफ चैतन्य महाप्रभु टू टीच रागानुगा भक्ति मार्ग दिस इज मेन थिंग एंड अदर थिंग्स लाइक नगर संकीर्तन एंड ऑल और द्वैताचार्य में डू ऑल दिस थिंग्स बट एक्सेप्ट कृष्ण एनी वन कैन नॉट एस्टैब्लिश दिस थिंग्स रागानुगा भक्ति मार्ग एंड दैट इज एज कृष्ण in the form of chaitanya mahaprabhu sachinandan gaur he distributed all everywhere from corner to back corner from navadip to ganga to ocean indian ocean and from east to west and west and only a fraction is coming to this western and eastern country <coughs> only by him his bashi so we should try to know all these things now time is over about the eight i want that at once from our place to be done and tomorrow we will explain all these things very clearly go prema krishna jay jay radha raman hari go jay jay radha raman Shamarani Didi and Bhakti Vedanta Aranya Maharaj at 10 a.m. will give a class on book distribution. Jai. We'll follow up on what Radha Kanta Prabhu is saying tonight. So please come at 10 o'clock on Tuesday. So also those devotees, everyone who ordered bhog for uh, Anakut Mahotsava Govardhan Puja tomorrow after class, they can come and see Tanga Vidya Didi and pick up their orders. They'll be separating everything into bags, and then you can begin <laughs> cooking. As on Monday fire sacrifice fire jagna and as mother mara she pai mother mara says monday will become tuesday and tuesday will become monday for the class schedule but we will make the adjustments what time is that 10 10 a.m. monday morning thank you cooking will begin tonight also cooking has already begun but everything that came it will begin and then also all in the morning so thank you all so much for coming This drama is about to begin. Us under his instruction, we're trying to just give you something, a little touch of these past times. As he has said many, many times, these dramas they're just like my teachings. So, listen very carefully. And again, thank you all so much for coming to New Braj for this wonderful festival. So, this drama was written by Shrimati Ruk Rukmavati in Australia and here the girls of New Braj have put together this pastime of Chitraketu Maharaj so for the pleasure of Shri Gurudev our Chidandi Sanyasa gan to all the Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis and to all of our honored guests we humbly present this drama play please forgive any mistakes thank you very much
You can do a play? These words have been pounding in my ears. I was simply waiting in the crowd, only to glimpse his lotus feet, when an opening appeared and the Mahabhagavat was standing before me. With a smile on his lips, he jokingly challenged, You can do a play? Why do I say jokingly, he spoke? For how does a fool like myself, one whose consciousness is completely obscured by lust, for a billion lifetimes I have wandered throughout the entire material universe, sometimes in the dress of a great demigod, and sometimes as an ant. I have searched for gratification everywhere, and always met with failure. And then, before me for an instant stood the Mahabhagavad, by chance, for what good fortune have I endeavored to achieve? And with it, my old journey came to an end, and a new one has begun. Assistant! Oh, you have come. Yes, yes, here I am. Isn't everything all right? Where are all the actors? Isn't the play supposed to start now? Yes, all of the devotees have gathered in great anticipation. Oh, yes. I see them now. Hi, right, bye, everybody. <laughs> what play are we doing tonight? One that goes back in time to the end of Satya Yuga and covers the expanse of the entire universe. It includes demigods and sages, palaces inhabited by millions, and a lake covered in lotus clusters. Oh, I get it now. I understand. I know it's bothering you. This this stage is too small. We need a bigger stage. Maybe some new curtains. Whether the stage is too small or not, will our audience grasp the essential truth being spoken tonight? The rare and wonderful association of Bhagavad, the importance of Guru, the steadfast mind of a devotee, or the absolute invincibility of transcendental sound. Will these concepts travel through time and touch the hearts of our audience? Oh Lord, will I again be able to be the servant of your servants who find shelter to lotus feet? Will my mind always think of your transcendental attributes? Will my words glorify you? Will my body always engage in your loving service? Who is that? The play is beginning, but this is the end. O oh Lord, source of all opportunities, I do not wish to enjoy in Trivaloka the heavenly planets, nor where Lord Brahma resides. I do not want to be the supreme ruler of the earthly or lower planets, nor do I want to be the master of the powers of mystic yoga, nor do I want liberation if I have to be separated from Ah, this, this is the voice of King Indra. He is remembering within his mind the words of the demon Ritrasura and remorsefully lamenting his fate. Remorsefully lamenting his fate? What is his fate? What ever happened to King Indra? And how did he end up in the stem of the lotus flower? One question at a time, for the answers are very complex. King Indra is living within the stem of a lotus flower, situated in the beautiful Manasa Sarovara Lake. He spends his time meditating on the Supreme Lord, remembering his killing of the demon Vrchasura and suffering almost to the point of starvation. Oh, Lord, Lord. Just as baby birds who have not yet developed wings always look for their mother to return and feed them, as small calves who anxiously wait for the time of milk, or the morose wife whose husband is away yearns for his return, but who is long for the opportunity to serve you. Another prayer he enters is reciting from this vicious sir. How is it possible that a demon could compose such beautiful prayers? King Indra is hiding from personified sin who chased him here and there throughout the universe. He is very ashamed and regretful because he killed a Vaishnava who appeared before him in the dress of the demon Richasura. 
But how could a Vaishnava take birth as a demon? A contradiction to be sure. A Vaishnava who takes birth as a demon and then encourages his enemy to slay him. The answer to your question will take us back to the beginning of our play tonight, where millions of years ago there was a king named Chitraketu. This king possessed many opulences, many wives, a populace that loved him dearly, and great personal attributes. But he was morose and constantly distraught for never having begot a son. Oh, look! What 
what's happening now? Did that sage agree to help King Chichiketu get his son? The play continues. Angira Muni is a very powerful sage. He is preparing a fire sacrifice and offering sweet rice. Now, that sweet is given to Queen Krita Duti, who will bear King Chichikeju's son. Oh, so the king, he gets his son. That's wonderful, isn't it? Yay! Oh, so this, this could be the end of the play right now. No, no, not the end. Now listen very carefully to the words of Angira Muni. For King Chichiketu does not. O oh, great king, you will have a son who will be the cause of both great jubilation and lamentation. A son! I will have a son! You will have a son! Didn't you hear what Angira Muni said to the king as he was leaving? What? Angira Muni said that this son would be the cause of great happiness and great lamentation. Oh, but everyone knows about happiness and distress. That only means that, you know, maybe his little boy is going to be naughty sometimes because. He's going to be so adorable. He can get away with anything. His father's going to love him so much. And, oh, he's just going to be so cute. And, you know, it's only in this way that maybe his father would experience just a little bit of anguish, just like a pinch. You just worry too much. Unless you happen to be a jealous co-wife whose heart has been rent asunder by the wielding claws of envy. But everyone, in any way, in some course of time, a son will be born, and everyone should be happy. Well, a son is born, but everyone is not happy. I don't care. This just isn't fair. We are the king's wives as well. I am also a queen. Since the birth of that child. Oh friend, but you forget. Not the queen with the sun. Whether it is fair or not. What can we do? Our husband hates us. Since the birth of that child. Our husband doesn't even care to glance in our direction anymore. With eyes only for the mother of that child. I can't go on like this. It's unbearable. We'd be better off as... As maidservants! I'm sorry to say, but it's true. The king at least shows no indifference to them. And the queen... She struts around like she owns us anyways. I despise her, hate her. You hate her, but the king, he insults us even more. The baby this, the baby that, it's all I ever hear. Did you know that our beloved husband gave away over 60 million cows on that child's birthday? And when he's not administering to the needs of that queen, he's with the baby in the nursery. I hate him with all my heart. And I, I hate the child. The reason they're out suffering this hell. For hate's sake, I'll spit my last breath at him. If only, if only what? Jackal screams through the blackness of the night. <laughs> Life can be so nebulous. Temporal, to be sure. Perhaps his duration of life could be shortened.
innocent. <laughs> a dastardly, deadly deed. A pest for pounding poison. An unassuming nocturnal nightcap. <laughs> waiting for the mother's absence. And the nurse busy with chores. With his sleeping lips parted, just one drop of the burning black robe of death. Let me covet the child. The burning black robe of death? What are they talking about? What are they going to do? What's happening? Who gave you this son, 
And this is the great sage, Nerd and Rudy. Any ability we have to create, maintain, or annihilate is being induced by the Supreme Lord. Yet, forgetting who has induced us to act so, we consider our very selves the doer. What does he say? Any ability that we have to create, such as a father who begets a son, such as the government seeing to the public's welfare, or even the ability that snakes possess to annihilate, these all belong to the Supreme Lord who induces them in us. That is why we must remember that it is the Supreme Lord who is in control of everything and not consider that we are the doers. You are great personalities. Can you help me? Blinded by the darkness of my illusions. Please, light the lamp of knowledge. Save me. Well, does everyone understand what's happening now? Oh, yes. I can see. The king has submitted himself at the lotus feet of the guru. Yes. <laughs> we may possess many things. A body, wife, son, fame, wealth, friends. Yet, they are all the same. And that one day, we will be forced to be separated from them. They are all impermanent. And because they are sometimes seen, and sometimes not, they are a constant cause of expectations and disappointments. Therefore, try to understand who we really are why we are under the influence of this lamentation. Jivara Sirpahoi, Krishnara Nityadas, Krishnara Tatashtashakti, Veda Veda Prakash. The living entity's constitutional position is to be an eternal servant of Krishna because he is the marginal potency of the Supreme Lord. By understanding this, we will be able to obtain peace. Oh, what is happening now? By his mystic power, Narada Muni will bring the dead child back to life and is about to address us. According to the, my fruit of activities, I, the soul, travel from one body to another. Sometimes I take birth as an animal, sometimes as a plant, and sometimes as a human being or demigod. Therefore, in which birth was this king my so-called father? Oh, this child is surely bewildered. No, he is not bewildered. He is very clear-headed. Excuse me. Excuse me. I, I, I'm really sorry. I I know this is a little inappropriate, but I got a problem here. <laughs> You're saying so-called parents. I had children. You just left a few minutes ago, and now they're your so-called parents? What is this? Because of my past karma, I have been forced to enter many different bodies made of the five gross elements and the three subtle elements. Each time, the mixture of elements is different. So. I appear sometimes as an ant and sometimes as a demigod. <coughs> Just because I entered a body made by this king does not make me his son in any way. My real relationship is with the Supreme <coughs> Personality of Godhead. Well, if that's the case, then why have you caused the king so much pain? Our relationships in this material world are the results of our dealings as we try, try to enjoy the material elements. Who has not experienced that today's friend is tomorrow's enemy? Perhaps in my last life, I was the king's enemy and I'm now appearing as his son. Why should he not consider me his former enemy and be jubilant upon my death? 
Well, help me to understand this, if you will. If the king is your enemy, then why does he have so much affection for you? If your enemy's gold falls into your hands, do you not use it for your own purposes? Do you not love it all the more? Gold is gold, but in different situations, it is either your friend or your enemy. So you're saying that the king's affection for you was only as a son? Yes. For example, when an owner is sold, from, when an animal is sold from one owner to another, the sense of ownership is broken. In the same way, I appeared as the king's son for some time. And when I went to another body, the affectionate relationship is broken. It is only the body which is born and lost along with all the connections related to it. Relations connected to it. Well, then what about us, the soul? The soul is equal in quality to the Supreme Lord because like the Lord, it is eternal. This soul is not affected by friends and enemies or happiness and distress. Well, I seem to be affected in that way. Because the soul is very, very small, it can be covered by the material energy. But, but in this conditioned state, we do have friends and enemies and are always affected by hanker and lamentation. In order to become free from all these things, we must depend on the transcendental Supreme Lord. Actually, I'm... Um... Starting to make a little sense here, and uh, thanks, uh, young man. <laughs> Being astonished by the words of his dead son, King Chichiketu cut the shackles of his material affection and gave up his lamentation. Oh, this has been so exhausting and stressful that finally at last we've come to the end of our play. This could be the end, but for the king and for all of us, it is only the beginning. Do you remember the beautiful prayers that we heard earlier? As small calves wait anxiously for the time of milking, as a morose wife yearns for her husband's return. Such longing and desire such love and affection for the Supreme Lord was expressed in these words by this same Chichiketu who we have just now seen renounce material affection. But I thought we heard those prayers from Vitrashura. So Vitrashura and Chichiketu are one and the same. Then how did our dear king go from renouncing his worldly life to developing such strong and deep sentiments for the Lord within his heart. Your question is very good. Though the hour is late, I will answer in brief. When Angiramuni first came to the king, he only gave him a son. It wasn't until after the death of his son that Narada Muni also came and gave instructions regarding Bhakti Yoga. It is only after material attachment and the desire to enjoy the material world has been given up that one can fully understand bhakti yoga. Then, hearing and chanting mantras given by his guru, King Chitraketu journeyed from the dark well of materialistic life to the sweet resting place of the Lord's lotus feet. Blessing to the compiler of this story, 
Sí. Oh, my blessing. From the beginning, there is a pure devotee there. Those in household are life, but I want, oh, they should preach my mission in this way, that preparing this world. And also, by so much blessing to the son of king, also, she was. I like him very, and I have so much affection for him. And that is why I told him to be my most favorite dis <laughs> disciple, that he may message me, massage me, he can cook for me, yeah. he can preach for me, and, <laughs> and he is very qualified. I want that very soon he should be expert in all these things. Yeah. Yeah. Blessing to Angira and North Rishi. And blessing to oh, the personality Narada and Angira, but who are playing the part of North Angira, my blessing that they should follow Angira and North, actually, and this should be oh, developed developing their Krishna forms instead of like that. All the kings, the king, Chitraketu Maharaj, is still now and not recognize that who is he. Yours, oh, oh. <laughs> very wonderful, very wonderful. <laughs> so all the in the oh, family of Nanda Kumar, Nanda Gopal. Ram Kishor. Oh yes, she is also. And daughter of Prithu. Prithu are what? Pool. So, uh, they played part very well. The kids. And they hated that boy. And they, uh, oh, next poison. In milk, or oh, this is the measure of it. But you know, when Narada and Angira came, and he told all this is dhan, and Jiva Tattva, Krishna Tattva, all that in King and King. Uh, also, oh, I will come. So, what I will don't disturb me. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, this is the nature that, oh, without any reason, they quarrel themselves. They cannot bear <coughs> happiness of another animal, very jealous of. This is nature of this world. But the king, they also realized this fact and they went to Narada and Antira and fell flat on their lotus feet and requested. Now we have given poison. Now we are given. So please be merciful to me, like king and queen, and give initiation, initiation and mantra to me, that we can be successful in our life. Then Narada and Angira, they became very happy and with the king, and all the kings. Oh, oh, he gave mantra and all left their houses. We cannot leave this world. But they left and went to the forest and they began to chant that mantra and remember very quickly Chitraketu Maharaj became one of the very dearest of Krishna of Sankarsan and became the god brother of Sankar. And now oh, they have told all the history of it. And also I have uh, uh, blessing oh, who? Bajendra Nanda. That he arranged some questions. 
But <laughs> important question. Interesting. And that why? Oh, very boldly and very in good way he explained everything and he answered all these things. To my blessing to all, up to all that. And to hear an also, audience also, they patiently heard. And I think that this is my mission to come to do here. Go, Prima. <laughs> Oh, to your sweets, but...